Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to make these beautiful nebula scenes with EV in Blender 2.8. You might remember that back in March I did a video about this subject, but since then there have been so many new developments that I thought it was time to make an update. Throughout the community, a collection of people have been experimenting with ways to get more realistic looking nebulas. Some, like Hans Chu, have been taking a more stylistic approach. Others, like Mark Kingsnorth, have been looking for more realistic outcomes. Brent Patterson must also be mentioned here for his lovely demonstrations. Gleb Alexandrov and AD Burroughs have also been paying close attention to the potential of both Eevee and Cycles to create interesting space effects. You might remember they made a Space VFX Elements course for 2.7 versions of Blender. If you know me, I enjoy using vibrant colours, so I've been observing these experiments and finding ways to give artists easy control over their look and feel, creating nice looking pieces like these in the process. And I feel like that's where my specialty lies in this kind of community development. Taking seemingly complex techniques, finding ways to simplify them into artistic tools, and then presenting them as fun toys for people of all skill levels to play with. So what I've done for this video is made a collection of demonstration files that will let you create images like this on your own. Please note, there are so many aspects of volumetric rendering with Eevee that are still being worked on, meaning that I will likely have to make more videos and resources to keep you up to date on the subject. One of the main drawbacks for the current implementation of these techniques is that you can't really do complex camera animations without running into some issues. Take a look at some of these camera tests from Brent. Notice the strange differing of these layers throughout the volume as they are moving in relation to the camera position. User Trinimedia has been active on Twitter helping to identify, explain and provide ideas for solutions to the issue. With that being said, let's take a look at the demonstration files I've prepared for you today. If you jump into one of the files, you should be able to go into the rendered viewport mode and immediately see the nebula start to form. It might not appear for a few moments for the first time as the shaders may need to compile, but once it's ready, you should see the color start to fill the screen. You might notice that the resolution of this viewport is kind of low, but that's just to prevent Blender from freezing up. If you want to increase the overall resolution of the volume, then you can do this by changing the tile size value in the volumetric section of the render settings. The lower the value, the higher the resolution will be. If you do not have a powerful computer, then you should definitely be careful with changing this value. Don't jump to the lowest value right away if you haven't tried any of the previous values, because the drop in performance could be drastic. Now let's take a look at the material nodes. I've tried to label the node regions to better explain what's going on. One thing you'll immediately notice is that there are four different principled volume nodes that make up this effect. There's a primary and secondary nebula for describing the main shape, as well as a highlight nebula and a fog volume that control the separate colouring around the main nebula, which in this case is the blue colour you can see around the screen. In terms of colour control, instead of using colour ramps like in the previous nebula video, I've connected hue saturation nodes to the default colour outputs, so you can shift that layer of the nebula to any colour. You can add a colour ramp to override the colour and get a gradient effect, but it can quite easily disrupt the balance of lighting in the scene. As well as this, I've joined the colour of the highlight nebula and the fog volume to a separate RGB node at the bottom. From here you will easily be able to change the surrounding colour. The reason I've placed it this way is to give you simple artistic control over the mood. Just to demonstrate how to change the colour, I'm going to change the hue values for the main and secondary nebula to 0.45, and then set the highlight colour node to a pale green. You can see how quick it is to mix up the combinations however you like. I will reset those values now. So let's talk about noise. Rather surprisingly, these nice looking structures are mostly comprised of the basic generated noise texture nodes, but the limitations for getting variety with these are quite obvious. If you wanted to change the actual shape of the nebula to something more interesting, then you would do so in this region of the nodes. This is before the values are passed on to either the density or colour calculations. You have the choice of replacing the node for your own preference of generators. For example, as per Gleb's recommendation, Brent Patterson had fun incorporating some of the procedural noise techniques made by Simon Toms, which are available to download on Gumroad. Since these demonstration files are using simple noise layouts, I've plugged in a single scale value that you can use to easily shift the size of the nebula. You can also play around with the other default values in the noise nodes to see how the volume shape will be affected. Moving on, nebulas tend to have stars in them, and that's because many of them are stellar nurseries where stars are born. There are multiple ways to get the effect of having stars in the nebula. You can place emissive spheres and lights manually, or you can even create the illusion of their existence inside of the material nodes. Regarding the node method, Mark Kingsnorf has made some good developments in exactly this area. He has also shared his node graph for these experiments on Twitter, so if you are interested in trying to recreate the effect, then I recommend going and having a look. For the demonstration scenes available with this video, we are using the sphere method, where lots of individual spheres have been scattered around the scene. There are two materials used for these, one which has a red tone, and one with a blue tone. Now let's take a look at other ways of controlling the look of the nebula. If you go to the filler fog volume and turn down the density, you can see this effect start to disappear. This is useful for if you want to emphasize the highlighting color around the main structure. You can change the prominence of this highlighting effect if you go to the noise for highlight nebula region of the nodes. 
You need to be very precise with these values, but if you slightly increase the number, you can shrink the highlighting effect. Likewise, you can change the strength of this highlight effect by changing the value on the adjacent multiply node. Again, you need to be very precise, so instead of scrubbing the value with the mouse, you should enter the values manually. For this video, I've been using the first demo file to show off these features, mostly because it's my favourite one. But there are a total of four demos included with the free resources, each using different colours to give you a nice variety to play around with. We're going to start wrapping up the video now. This one might not be as long as some other videos on the channel, but as I say, there are developments still being made for this community collaboration, and soon enough there will be solutions to the current bottlenecks. I will likely return to this subject further down the line, and update you with new information and of course more free resources, so don't forget to download the demos from the link in the description. Thank you to everyone who has been leaving me tips on all of the previous content, it really helps to keep this channel running. If you make something cool with the blend files, then make sure to tag me in your work so I can take a look. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and ring the notification bell. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.